Don Callis, who has been a featured heel on NWAT and a show. Thank you for fixing that typo, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Copy editing PW Torch. It said features first. I noticed that when I put it in the notes last night. I gave a quick read to the notes before I went to bed. I was like, oh, I should fix that. And then he fixed it. Mm-hmm. So who has been a feature heel on NWAT and shows in recent months is leaving the company. Leaving the business. Yeah, he's getting out. He's done. Callis informed the company that he has accepted a job working... <clears throat> That's terribly phrased. He's accepted a job working for blank <laughs> that will make it impossible for him to appear on Wednesday night shows. <laughs> we should do more copy editing of PW Torch. I'm going to write a letter to Wade Keller. It's like, hey, Wade, this newsletter thing from, from 2004 wasn't entirely good. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't leave the company's name in. So yes, he's gotten a job outside wrestling, so he, uh, that'll involve him working weekdays. Uh, he could not pass up the job in favor of TNA, so he's gotten out of the business. Because as we mentioned on a recent episode, he did graduate with his MBA recently, and now he's gotten his job offer and he's done with wrestling. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's sad to see him go, mm. but uh, at least we got the payoff. Well, yeah, because we, we do get the build this month where they announced the, the new director of authority, which is Vince Russo, which we'll get into in the shows themselves. Wow, way to spoil it at the start, Gary. I know. This is just not burying the lead at all. But the idea that, that they were basically going to run it back, they were going to do Russo and Callis as the dueling GMs instead of Russo and Watts as the dueling GMs. But Callis left, so they just dropped it, and it's just Russo. Hey, listen, I'll take I'll take a Russo in charge. Would you? <laughs> I mean, as an on-screen character. Callis offered to put over Eric Watts on the way out, but Jarrett nixed it because they had already booked the idea of Vince Russo shocking everyone as the babyface director of authority, and Callis winning would ruin that planned storyline. And uh, Watts winning, I guess, is what that meant to be he said there. Yeah, that's us copy editing Dave. <laughs> Jeez, we're fixing all of the dirt sheets. <laughs> this, this yeah, it was not a priority in 2004. <laughs> to be accurate. Nah, gotta get it out. Hey, man, that's that 2022 uh, mindset there of just gotta get the content out through what it actually says. Mm. So you will notice that Don Callis beat Eric Watts on the last show of January. He was then there on the first show of January when he was celebrating with Jeff Jarrett, and he was just gone. Ironically, like, he had the same sort of panning out as Eric Watts, who was also just, like, there for the first and then gone. At least they do explain it. There is a line from, I think, Mike Denier, Don West on commentary in the last show of the month where they say that Don Callis has now been reduced to the role he was hired for, where he is a management consultant and nothing else, and he will not be, he's been banned from the asylum. So they do kind of lightly write him out. I do appreciate that Callis winning and getting full control actually just meant that Jared gets full control. Yeah. And they, they, there wasn't even any, like, pretenses about that. Callis wasn't even like, yeah, what about me? It's like, no, no, Jeff's in charge. <laughs> But though I kind of appreciate just having a, a Jeff who can freely be like, this is my company. <laughs> mm. Like, I, I don't like this pretending that we don't know who's in charge thing. There is a line in the promo where Chris Harris is like, you don't own TNA. It's like, no, no Chris, he does. He does own TNA. <laughs> Quite literally, for now. At least part of it still. He's not majority shareholder anymore, but he does own a percentage of the company. Mm. 